Hello friends. Today, I am going to show you how to control a servo motor using ESP Rainmaker and ESP32. I will show you the step-by-step -step process to wiring the components together. Then I will write some code to control the servo motor. After that, I will set up ESP Rainmaker app and finally, I will test everything to show the working of the project. For this project, I am using an ESP32 board, a servo motor, a breadboard, and jumper wires. Let's start by wiring the components together. First, we need to connect the servo motor to the ESP32 board. We'll be using pin 13 on the board to control the servo motor. So, connect the signal wire of the servo motor to pin 13 on the ESP32 board. Next, let's connect the power and ground wires. The servo motor typically requires a 5 volts power supply. So, I will use the 5 volts pin on the ESP32 board to power the servo motor. So, connect the red wire of the servo motor to the 5 volts pin on the ESP32 board. And connect the black wire to the ground pin. Before move on, make sure that the wiring is correct. Double check the wiring to avoid any hardware damage. Now let's move to the coding of the project. The first step is to install the ESP32 board. So, copy the highlighted URL. Then go to File, Preferences. Here, click on the additional board manager. And paste the URL here. Then close the Preferences window. After that, go to Tools. Board. Board Manager. Now, search for ESP32. And then install the version 2.0.6. After installing the ESP32 board, go to Tools. Board. ESP32 Arduino. Here select ESP32 Development Module. Next, click on Partition Scheme. And then select the Rainmaker. Next, we need to install the ESP32 Servo Library. You can install it from Library Manager. This library provides the functions we need to control the servo motor. Just install the latest version of the library. Next, here, I have created a servo object. And set the pin number to 13, which is the pin that is connected to the servo motor. Next, I have created a fan device. This fan device will be used to control the servo motor from the Rainmaker app. Now, let's move on to the setup function. In this function, I have attached the servo object to the pin 13 of ESP32. Next below, I have declares a variable called my node. A node represents a device or group of devices on the ESP Rainmaker platform. Next, this line initializes the my node object with the name room1. This means that when we register this node with ESP Rainmaker app, the name room1 will display in the Rainmaker app. Next, this block of code will add a slider to the node. And this slider will be used to control the servo motor. Next, I have set the minimum value of the slider to 0 and maximum value to 180. This means that you can use the slider to rotate the servo from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. The last thing you need to understand is the write callback function. This function is called automatically when you move the slider on the app. This function gets the current position value of the slider which can range from 0 to 180. Next. I have stored the current position value of the slider in an integer variable. And then, I have then passed this value to the servo.write function, which takes an angle between 0 to 180 degrees as an input, and then rotates the servo to that angle. Now the code is ready. Next, click on upload button to upload the code to your ESP32 board. After uploading the code, open the serial monitor. Next, press and hold the boot button of your ESP32 for more than 3 seconds and then release the button. Now, take a look at the serial monitor 
and you'll see a URL for a QR code. Just copy this URL and then open it in any web browser such as Google Chrome. You can see the QR code is generated. Next, open the ESP Rainmaker app on your phone. Make sure you have turned on the Bluetooth of the phone. Then tap on Add Device. And then scan the QR code. On the next screen, select your router's Wi-Fi SSID and enter the password. The app will start configuring the project for you. Once it's done, tap, tap on Done. Here you see that the app is ready to use. Finally, we will test the project to make sure everything is working properly. First, I will move the slider to 180 degrees, and you can see that the servo motor rotates to 180 degrees. Then move the slider back to zero, and you can see that the servo motor also rotates back to the zero degree. You can move the slider to any angle you want, and the servo motor will move accordingly. That's all for today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. See you in another video. Bye.